they saved Ducati from extinction, they combine what should not go together, and they prove that style over substance can actually attain cult status. Let me take you for a ride to the past and present of the dazzling Ducati Scrambler. What is dominating Ducati sales today started a whopping 60 years ago. In 1962, American Ducati distributor Berliner demanded a new kind of motorcycle. It was supposed to work on the road, in racing and off-road. Ducati's answer was the first scrambler. It took a 250cc four-stroke single-cylinder engine from the Mark III model with standard frame, brakes and fork. Thanks to its novelty tires and removable headlight, however, it was also able to go off-road. Not being a real dirt bike anyway, the Scrambler soon lost these touches by 1966 and became a very obvious exercise in style over substance. And the customers loved it. It became a huge success in the US and it still has cult status in many countries all over the world today. Its range lasted almost 15 years and included a 125, a 250, a 350 and a 450. What's even more important though, its success came during a dire period for Ducati and it practically saved the company from extinction in the early 70s. You heard right, the plucky scrambler saved the day. Fast forward to the year 2015. Our retro wave is engulfing the motorcycle market and while other brands just rehash classic styling or even use data technology, Ducati is taking the scrambler to the 21st century. Modern tech, easy accessibility, a broad model range and a modest price tag make it a really good entry option for a wide variety of riders. This time, however, not into a struggling company, but into one of the most desirable brands in the world. Like its ancestor, it uses a tried and tested engine, this time an 800cc tester Strata from the Monster, and it combines that with off road components once again. And just like in the 60s, the Scrambler is hitting the sweet spot. In 2015, it makes a top 10 list of best selling street bikes in the world, a first in Ducati history. And so they add more models to the range, from a more off-roady desert sled to an 1100cc option for the bigger boys. Today, it is the most successful Ducati model, eclipsing all the Panigales, the Multistradas, and even the bread and butter monster. The scrappy scrambler has returned with a vengeance. My personal favorite is a 2017 Scrambler Cafe Racer. What, you say? A Scrambler Cafe Racer doesn't even make sense? Well, strictly speaking, no factory Cafe Racer makes sense. But who cares? Scramblers have always put foam over function and the Cafe Racer is the embodiment of that very idea. It should be fun, 
minimalist and they should look and sound the part. And boy does it do that. The black coffee paint scheme harkens back to the legendary 900 Supersport from the 1970s while the number 54 on the side panel pays homage to Bruno Spaggiari, a famous Ducati racer from the 1960s. To me, this little bike looks better than many other modern Ducatis and its exhaust gives it a fantastic little rumble too. Oozing character, but not so much that your neighbors throw garbage at you. When we talk about Ducati today, we usually mean either Panigales or MotoGP. But enjoying a motorcycle is not always about peak horsepower or racing success. In the end, it's all in the fun doing it. And in the case of Ducati, great looks and sound, let's be honest. Ducati got that right in the 1960s with the original Scrambler and they did it again with the current model range. Does it need the whole land of joy extravaganza? Not for me, I'm a bit of a minimalist. It is exactly that minimalism, however, which the Scrambler motorcycle excels at. So, burn the brochures, sport your leathers, and just enjoy the ride. Donny Desmo, out. American Ducati distributor Berliner, which has nothing to do with the donut, on the road, in racing, and off road. Fast forward to the year 2015. Uh, today, the Scrambler is the best-selling Ducati in the Blanc. You know what this bike has that many others don't? Charm. I shall name her Angelina. <laughs> 